Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful add-on known as Alpha Trees. Alpha Tree is a brand new add-on from the folks at Strike Digital and it is an amazing add-on that you can use in Blender for creating massive forest and also vegetation landscape. Now for those that would like to make some vegetations, you want to make some massive forest and you want to do this really really quick and you don't want it to be so heavy on your PC, then this is actually the add-on for you. Now today we're going to take a look at how this add-on works, what and what you need to know and how you can actually get the most out of this so with blender simply open let's talk about how you can install it actually before we talk about installing this let's talk about how you can get the most out of this so how you can populate things with this add-on is super simple all you need to do is with that installed you need to go over to the biome section and then create a new particle system and add a brand new system and with that you can just click on the plus sign click on multiple pluses and then you can just throw in anything that you want and because this works with CAD it is so easy for you to create things that will take you time okay so things that will take you hours on end you can now create this thing super easy and you can see in just a couple of clicks we now have this happening right here now tell me if this isn't wonderful of course you might be asking a couple of questions and we'll do our best to actually answer that now installing this is super easy as all you need to do is go over to edit go over to preference and within your preference section you need to click on install to install the add-on now once you download this add-on it comes with two files the first file that ends with the word extract and the second one that ends with the word install click on the install to install that and then you need to also extract the extract folder the extract folder is the library that contains the biomes and also the rendered image once you do that within the installation section you need to also specify the path that will take you over to where you have the biomes all right you need to specify that part as it is very necessary else the add-on would not see the rendered maps or the biomes themselves now once you do that and you're back in blender working with this is very easy so to work with this all you need to do is press n on your keyboard and go over to alpha trees now by default the alpha tree is split into two different categories or two different sections and the first one is called the alpha tree creator or the alpha creator and then you have the biomes now if you already own botanic tree this is going to be super cool for you because you can actually leverage of the trees that exist in botanic and create some amazing looking biomes yourself but if you don't of course this also works with other trees as well but for this example because we already have the botanic add-on we can actually use this one to do some stuff so i'm just simply going to go ahead and look for something let's take a look at the trees that we have here and maybe i can grab this one all right so i'm just going to go ahead and grab this and click on ok and make this editable now once we have this one ready to rumble we would go all the way back to the alpha tree and of course you can also access this by clicking on this button and doing all of that so once you go back here you can click right over here and make that selection and once you have that selection automatically the alpha tree would calculate the materials that you're working with and in this case you can have access to five different material the trunk material the branch leaf fruit and also flower so depending on the material type that exists on the tree that you're working with the alpha tree creator would actually calculate and also sort out this material 99 percent of the time it actually gets the accurate material now with that done if you go over to the setting you can do some butter padding settings and you can also increase the resolution so you can move this resolution from 1k all the way to 2k 4k depending on how clear you want your trees to be in terms of sampling we're just simply going to keep this as 15 as 15 is kind of the recommended one that you can use of course you can crank this all the way up but you know it's just going to be an overkill for what you're trying to make and once you have all of these things done for you to get this baking all you need to do is click on the bake maps and this would go through and create all of the relevant maps so once we hit on the bake maps click on ok will simply allow the alpha creator and also blender to do their stuff and in most cases this would freeze your blender for a couple of seconds and once that is done you would be able to have access to all of the relevant maps as it's going to go through take a look at the model and generate all these maps for you and right here you can see that we have the tree here and it has gone through to generate all of the relevant maps that we need so how do we bring this right in here and use it to populate our scene to bring this right into blender we need to go over to where we have biomes click on this button and you would notice that we don't get to see that particular tree that we've actually made so to see this we need to hit on the refresh button right here which is on the lower left corner of the biome section and now if we click on this button we should be able to see the tree right here all right so we have it right over here now if we click on this and click on import we now have this one right here and for those who will be wondering how can you import multiple stuff of course you can you can import multiple stuff if you go over to the biome section you can click on the import multiple or the multi import and once you do that you can select all of the trees or all of the you know stuff that you want 
select all of them and then you can now click on OK. And once you click on OK, it's going to create all of those things based off their height and you'll be able to have access to all of them. Now, in most cases, you might also want to have something that is customizable, something that you can play with, you know, something that you can make changes to. And yes, you can. So if I select this model, for example, and we go over to where we have the object, you would notice that there is a material setting that we can use. So if you want to play with the translucency, or maybe you want to play with the color of the leaf right now, you can actually do that. And for those who like to play with the amount of leaves that they have on the trees, of course you can have this. And these things are very animatable, so you can actually animate this if this is what you're going for. And you can also choose to play with the color of the trunk. If you want to get a dead tree, you can have that as well. If you like to add snow to this, of course you can also do that. If we go all the way down to where we have snow, we can start adding snow to our model. So this way, it's easier for you to now control what you want to have on your model at a given time. And this gives you so much control of what and what you can do. So let's get rid of this and talk about how you can populate your scene. So to populate your scene is super simple. Now for our case, what I'm going to do is simply have a simple grid right here, go over to where we have our modifiers and then throw in an ocean modifier. Now this is a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna switch and bring this down by pressing S on the keyboard. Let's scale this all the way down and I would increase the spatial size and also play with the timing a little bit go over to the wave and also play with the wave. So this way I've created, you know, something that looks more like the landscape that we want to work with. Of course, you can actually use the ant tool that exists in Blender to do all of that stuff, but I'm simply going to just use this one and explain some stuff to you guys. So once we have this going, the next thing you need to do to start populating things around your scene is by hitting the particle button. Now, if you click on the particle, you can click on the plus sign and this will automatically add some particles directly onto your surface. And you can now click on the new setting. And within the new setting, you'll notice that there's a couple of settings, which we'll talk about in a minute. And to add trees, you can click on the plus sign right here, scroll all the way down, select the trees that you would like to add. So I'm just going to add some more. Let's add that tree we just created, this one. And then we can add some more as well. So now we can add the ABs and we can also add this as well. So once we have all of this done, we can go through and increase the size if this is what we want. Within the setting, you can do that. So if you want to make some tall trees and stuff like that, yes, you can. If you like these to be tracked based off the camera, if you want them to be facing the camera at every given time, you can actually turn this on, specify the camera that you want them to be looking at. And what will happen is at every given time, once your camera is moving all right so at every given time once the camera is moving all of the trees would just automatically face the camera as the camera simply moves around and this would come in very handy for those who would want to have the trees looking at the camera at every given time so for those who also like to be able to paint density you want to be able to control the density and where these trees will be placed you can because if you go over to the distribution section and click on the add group within the density section you can now go through and paint density how and where you want. So in this case, if we press F on the keyboard, we can increase this and we can actually paint density wherever we want. So this way we now have some sort of control over the things that we want and how we want them to be placed. So let's say we would like this to actually be around some parts like so, and maybe some parts like this. And this way it just simply makes sense. And once you're done, you can just go over here and switch over to the object section and then you have all of these things and you can do some very cool and crazy things with it. All of the material settings that you have with your single object still exist for all these individual sections. And for those that are very excited about this and maybe want to add some more flavor to this, of course you can actually do that. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the camera and press the home key to zoom right in. And I'm just going to go through and position our stuff like so. And with this here, I would also go over to the physical atmosphere and throw this right in because, you know, I would like to get some very cool lighting happening. I'll increase the elevation about a point like that. Also play with the azimuth so that we can have this coming right around here. And I'm also going to bring this down. Well, let's actually raise this one up a bit and let's increase what we have going on here. And once we start traveling, you can now see that we have some beautiful stuff happening here. So with this, we can get some very cool lighting directly in our scene. 
And for those who like to get this, you can actually go over to the link in the description and start playing with it. And this is a beautiful add-on for those that are looking for ways to populate trees and also create forest and render thousands and thousands of tree very easily directly here in Blender. This is definitely going to save your processor, save your GPU, and also save you an incredible amount of time for creating massive forest and also landscape. So for those who like to grab this, link is gonna be in the description. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Strike Digital for making this possible. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.